Okay, I'm, I'm kind of laughing now because I have, it's literally taken me all, I've tried to make this video so many times, but I have run into like every technical glitch, which I've never had happen, and like every just life glitch imaginable. Oh, so my brain's totally fried, <laughs> but, but I'm going to do this. I swear to God, if it doesn't work in this tape, I might cry. Anyhow, okay. I'm gonna try to make words, but they might not work because I'm kind of tired at this point. Oh, uh, okay. My last video was about calories, if they matter. And if you haven't seen that video, you should go back and watch it. I'm not gonna talk about it right now. <laughs> that, um, that video spark some really cool questions that I like that I'm going to get into for future videos. But just to give you guys like a little bit of a heads up, I'm going to break down those videos into like calorie deficits, maintenance calories, um, eating in a caloric, um, I'm so I told you I can't make words right now, <laughs> eating more above maintenance to try to gain weight. And we're going to talk about, that's probably going to, you know, spark a bunch of other ideas that I can uh, turn into other videos. But there is one question that came up that I want to answer before those videos that I just mentioned because it's a really good question and it was about uh, online total daily energy expenditure calculators. So those calculators that you put in like your weight, your height, your gender, your age, um, if you can put in body fat percentage, it will actually probably give you a little bit more of a detailed or a little bit more of an accurate um, reading and it, it basically spits out your TDEE and then you can go from there and you can select you know if you want to lose weight, maintain weight, gain weight, we'll talk about that later. We're just talking about the calculators for now. So the question, there was a few questions, I'm going to go through them. Uh, the first one was do I think that those calculators are accurate? And I actually do. Um, I find they're actually, for me, at times it can be freakishly accurate. I find where they kind of start to um, be less accurate in the case that they like undershoot calories is um, a highly trained athlete that is training a lot. Um, but that being said, I mean, there's other people too, uh, people that have been like chronically under eating for a long time. Uh, maybe if someone is, you know, hypothyroid, so there's an underlying health issue um, that they haven't got treatment for yet, then it might overshoot. But in general, for most people, I find that if you go in and use one of those calculators, you can get a pretty good idea of where your calories should be. So <clears throat> the next question was, if your exercise frequency is changing week to week, should you go in and enter that data and then adjust your calories accordingly? Because that's one of the options that you put into the calculator is um, your training uh, frequency. So I ask you this, if your training frequency is changing that much week to week, that might be a part of the problem. So. <laughs> And that's also going to make it really, really difficult when you're trying to pinpoint what you kind of need as far as calorie ranges. If your exercise is all over the map, then it's just going to make it extremely difficult. It's just a variable that you want to try to keep consistent. So I really recommend analyzing that if that is something that you keep on running into. So <clears throat> in that scenario, uh, I mean, some people just might be just aiming too high. They might be like, oh, I want to train five days a week. And then they're only ever getting to the gym three days a week. Once in a while, there might be four. Randomly, they might have five. So do what you put into that calculator what you do consistently every single week. So if it's three, put in three. If once in a while you get a fourth workout in, cool, that's awesome, okay? It's just a bonus. I wouldn't go in there and start changing everything. The other thing I, you know, I want to say about that is that you're going to see, like, if you do go in and play with those numbers, it doesn't change things drastically. I think people are a little misled when it comes to how much calories they actually burn in the gym. So, you know, if you don't train that fourth session or whatever, and you don't have, so that day you wouldn't 
technically have like your post-workout shake and maybe there's, you know, some carbs to go along with that, that kind of compensates for that. So going into plugging into the cal into the calculator just seems, uh, just, it just seems like a waste of time. But <clears throat> like I said, if this is something that's coming up all the time. You have to take one step back and be like, why is this happening? Am I just trying to do too much based on my schedule? Go back, pick some realistic goals. And that way you shouldn't have to be tinkering with uh, your calculators all the time. So something else is where we're on the topic of, you know, the fact that some people I think overestimate how many calories their workouts actually burn. The one thing that this calculator will never factor in, in my opinion, is your training intensity. I can give two people the exact same workout and one person can do it and just kind of like coast through it, usually because they're not picking a weight that is heavy enough for the designated set and rep ranges, or maybe they're not using a full range of motion. Like if I go to the gym and, and do like a German volume training with a squat, this is just a random example, but you know, if you get someone that's doing like not even a squat to parallel, and then you have someone that's doing like an ass to grass squat, well, that person doing the ass to grass squat, their intensity of that workout is going to be way higher than the other person. So I just see a lot of people just kind of like flailing through their workouts and, and I'm not saying that that's you, but just something to keep in mind that I could give two different people the exact same workout and one person could completely push themselves to, you know, to, I don't want to say their max, but, you know, close to it and get way more of a caloric expenditure rather than someone kind of just like coasting through, maybe they're like chit-chatting, maybe they're on their phone. Like I said, the weight isn't high enough for the designated rep and set range. So you really got to take that into consideration. And I'm going to do a whole video about uh, training intensity because I think that's something that a lot of people overlook. So <clears throat> now the other thing that you will find with these calculators is that some of them will include uh, an option, so usually like a drop down option for your, your uh, activity level throughout the day. I'm struggling. <laughs> um, your activity level throughout the day. So do you have a desk job? Do you work like a labor intensive job? And that is your, um, your NEAT, non-exercise activity thermogenesis. So basically like me, I have a desk job, but I tend to like run around the house and multitask, which is maybe not a good thing sometimes, but for the most part, you know, I wouldn't say my day is completely sedentary. I'm usually buzzing around trying to do certain things. I also walk the dog every day. I also try to like do some cleaning. All those things really add up. So if you can find, um, and I know you guys are gonna ask me to provide my favorite um, calculators and I'll go through that and try to put them in the notes. Some of them I find, I had two favorite ones and just recently I went back to look at them, they are gone, they just didn't work anymore. So that's kind of a bummer, but there are other ones out there. There's a lot of them out there actually. So. Not all of them uh, calculate or take into consideration your NEAT, which I think can kind of <laughs> mess people up, especially you have a, if you have a labor intensive, you know, labor intensive job or the other side of the spe spectrum where you just, you're just basically on your butt all day long. And when, you know, it's not even just what you do for work. Some people on non-training days, they come home from work and they just watch TV all night where other people will go walk around the mall or they'll go walk the dog or they'll go for a bike ride, they'll go do something with their kids. So all those things need to be taken in consideration and that's where you will find like a swing sometimes um, with what it recommends and where you might need a little bit more. Uh, is there anything else I want to cover in this video? We talked about if I like the calculators. Yeah, I actually do. Uh, we talked about the exercise question, because I think that was a great question about if stuff changes, do you go recalculate it? I would say no, go back and ask why is stuff changing all the time? Now that being said, if you, <laughs> if you just have a random week where let's say your kid was sick or, you know, your mother needed your help with something and you just 
didn't get to the gym for whatever reason for a few days and you know everything's back to normal next week then I wouldn't worry about it too much and then of course uh, using a calculator that you can input uh, your activity level throughout the day uh, you're neat, then that's another one that I think is super important. So I think that covers the questions, the basic questions without getting into choosing uh, calorie deficits and then other questions that go along with that. Um, might be more than one video. So yeah, I like to use the calculators. I um, have my own calculator that I've created that I use for most of my clients and I, I usually find that, like I said, unless there's like something on either end of those spectrums that might be influencing uh, those numbers. I just find that they're actually pretty good. So I hope this helps you guys and I will uh, be back soon with another YouTube video. <laughs> Have a good one.